Hi, I'm Stephanie Wainwright. I'm a wife, a mom, a business owner, and my life is chaotic all the time. So I created this podcast to help you find the funny, the good, while navigating through the chaos. This is Chaotic Compass Podcast. Hey guys, Stephanie here, Chaotic Compass Podcast. Um, I am... (laughs) Uh, solo again this evening in case you guys don't know my name is Stephanie I'm a wife I'm a mom I'm a business owner I sit here and I sip and I bitch and I talk about all the things today's topic I am talking about sharing mental load um so I keep hearing this it's one of those catchphrases and it's always been around it's just it's becoming more um I guess talked about Um, I've seen a lot of people on um, social media that actually dive into it and how to um, kind of, I just bring it to light. It's more, it's now it's more talked about in a good way, you know, because it's, it's mental load. It it can be a neutral statement, but carrying around a heavy mental load by yourself is not good. Um, is just think about a boulder. If you were carrying around a boulder all day by yourself and nobody was even seeing you and nobody was trying to help you, then, okay. So what is mental load? Mental load is the cognitive effect involved in managing your work relationship, a family, and a household. They also coined the term of worry work. I've never really heard that one, but um, mental load. And I've I've been recently trying to uh, get my husband to kind of see more about exactly what is going through my head. Like just for instance, we had taken, and God help us, but we had taken all four kids to the grocery store. It is getting easier. It's not like they're teeny tiny and grabbing everything. Well, the little one still is grabbing everything and trying to put it in the cart or touching everything, but she's nine and it's, we're working through it. But when we go to the grocery store just recently with all of the kids, it was one of those nights where I was like, okay, let's do something easy. My husband's like, well, let's do grilled cheese and soup. Let's go in and just everybody pick out the soups. And so I was also trying to get all of the stuff for a recipe that I found for the crock pot or that I know for the crock pot and I was going to make that for the next day. So I had to get all of those items because I have the, it's a reel. And so you have to listen to the guy talk about all the ingredients over and over and over again so I get it. So I was doing that. I had sent the kids, um, you know, to go pick out their soups. Some of them had decided that they wanted to do TV dinners instead. Apparently... And correct me if I'm wrong, but my kids seem to think when we get TV dinners, it's a specialty. It's a great night Um, because we don't do it that often. When we did TV dinners as when I was growing up, that was like mom is on her last fucking leg and you better pick something quick or you're not going to get anything to eat. Like basically... Get something that you can heat up in the microwave yourself and leave mom the fuck alone. Um, and and I used to always get these kids' cuisines. Well, Isla had gotten one of those kids' cuisines, and I'm over here looking at this corn dog and fry thing as I'm heating it up in the microwave. I'm like, I used to eat this shit. It's like, I know why the girl got it, because it had the brownie in it with the sprinkles, and my girl loves some, you know, dessert But anyways, my kid thought it would, you know, all of the kids thinking this is a special night, like, ooh, we get to kind of pick what we want for dinner. And everybody kind of went in a different direction. I think Kylie got some Thai. Uh, Liam, oh man, I don't, I don't remember. Oh yeah. Liam got witness to what instant potatoes tasted like. He had gotten one of those Marie calendars. It was like beef tips and mashed potatoes and gravy. And he was like... This is what they feed people in prison. (laughs) Okay, I digress. Anyways, we're at the grocery store painting you a beautiful picture. The kids are all in different directions. My husband is in a different direction. I have gotten all the ingredients for the next evening's dinner, and I still haven't picked out what I want for dinner. 
Um, I literally say to my husband, I was like, hey, can you watch the kids? I, you know, make sure the kids are all around you. Basically, make sure that they're not leaving or getting kidnapped. I'm just going to go down to the frozen food section real quick and pick out what I want. I no sooner say those words, they come out of my mouth. And my husband, for some reason, I, he, had, he needed to get something else. But instead of making sure that all of the kids are in tow, he just keeps walking. And I holler out. I'm like, yo, look at this right now. Like, this is my mental load. I am overwhelmed because I've not had to watch all of the kids. I've had to get all of the food for the next freaking meal. You're going off into outer space. You're not even listening to what I just said. And all I want to do is pick out what I want for dinner with just nobody around me. Nobody asking questions. I literally had to explain to my 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 son, who's just now turned 11, of what a TV dinner is. <laughs> so I'm over here like, this is where I'm at. You need to pay attention to the kids. The kids are on your duty now. You can't just walk away. And he's like, oh, I thought they were behind me. And I'm like, dude, please make sure the kids stay with you. <laughs> and so it was one of those moments where I was like, wow, I literally had to explain to him exactly where I was and what he was doing wrong. And it was like, this is this is a lot. This is a lot. And I was like, all we were trying to do was just go in here and get some dinner and, and go home. You know, we had been through, that was a long day. We had been going to Liam's uh, soccer practice. Or no, it was actually a soccer game that morning. We had to be there. Uh, the game started at nine. Fucking soccer game starting at nine. It's like, I'm not even awake before nine, really. Um, and then, you know, we, we, we all went to a... Uh, escape room this weekend talked my son into a an escape room he is definitely afraid of them because he's claustrophobic anyways it went well but the mental low that I was carrying there of trying to keep him calm and trying to get through the room within the amount of time and so it was like oh my god and so I was exhausted at this point I literally just wanted to get home heat up some dinner pour me a drink a stiff drink and keep moving on. And so I was already taxed out. And now all the kids are going in a different direction. My husband is going in a different direction. It was like, wow, what the fuck? And so the the steps that I have seen that I'm happening to implement, um, number one, I have to bring awareness to my husband of not only, you know, the the load that I'm carrying around specifically what what I'm feeling at that moment, um, like the anxiety or the stress or the exhaustion, you know, the feeling that is is tied to at that moment of the mental load. Um, <laughs> but I feel like it's, I feel like sometimes this is more work in itself, uh, explaining to him, you know, now it's like I've got a I've got to process what exactly, you know, why I'm, am I feeling this way? You know, what has gone on today? What's transpired? And it's like, I wish he would just see. I wish. And then the, to the dudes in the back, I know dudes listen to this. Um, or anybody with a significant other. If you are witnessing your significant other stressing out, don't, don't, don't ignore it. That's just going to make it worse, right? Because then they are going to feel even more stressed out because now it's like, wow, nobody sees me, nobody hears me kind of thing. And that's kind of where I was in, to put it plain and simple, it's like, if I've got to explain to you specifically what's going on in my head to get you to see that I'm stressed is it worth it to me is it worth it um it's like I just I just want you to just see that I'm anxious it doesn't you don't need to know the why my husband is a why person just like I am and it's like I don't want to explain the why I just want you to see me that I'm stressed out just be like whoa dude I got you I see you you know the other thing 
is the next step is that you're supposed to divide and decide. And this is this is another problem I have with because I think the I can't remember where I found these steps at. Um, it was it was like you have to talk about you know hey we're we're bringing awareness to it and then it's like okay so let's divide that load and so it's not so heavy for you to carry around well in theory that sounds great but when i'm the person that is constantly making a plan and then you know delegating the steps in the plan to either my husband my kids or me you know when I'm the one that's quote, quote, in charge, it's like, that's exhausting. The number one thing that my husband does, besides his AD, ADD, um, when he says, just tell me what you want me to do. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. That shit fucking irks me. It's like, now I've got to process, okay, what needs to be done? And then I've got to delegate what needs to be done to you. And then some of those things need instructions on how to do them. And it's like, that just makes the mental load even heavier because now you're no longer an equal part in this. We're not dividing between equally. I'm literally just delegating to you. Delegating is something that you put a task on somebody and typically that somebody is less than you, like less authority than you. <laughs> and the only reason I know that is because I used to work at a job and I had to work up, you know, the courage to ask for help, to ask for, hey, can we hire a part-time person to help me? And, you know, they kept telling me, well, just delegate, delegate it. And I eventually looked it up and I was like, so delegate means... And I'm supposed to give tasks to other people. Well, when I'm the only one in the office on a regular basis and I don't have anybody that's less superior than me, everybody has been here longer, everybody, it's it's very difficult to delegate. So I think we're looking for a different word here. <laughs> um, so... When I have to delegate tasks to my husband, my husband and I are no longer equals. It's no longer a, a, a we are dividing and conquering thing. It's not we we see the problems and we're attacking the problems. It's just now you are part of my army and I have commanded you to help me attack. And so I was like, okay, if I was me, married to me, I know. Go on the strip with me. If I was me, married to me, what would I say to me? Um, and so people with significant others, dudes with wives, especially, I feel like I'm preaching to, to you dudes. This is exactly what you need to say. And I swear it's going to change. And I hope my husband's listening to this. It's going to change your relationship. Okay. I've noticed you have a lot on your plate. I don't always know what to do to help, but how about I do, and then make a suggestion on exactly how you can help. There's no wrong answer here. Just make a suggestion. But because you started it off with, I don't know all of the answers. I just know that you need help, right? Oh my God. Oh my God. Like just start somewhere. Just throw out an idea. Why is it all on that one person to solve the problems? I literally bitch about this all the fucking time. Why is it my job to figure out a plan for the kids, to figure out a plan for him, to figure out a plan for our business? Why am I always the one that's the freaking project manager for every single aspect of our jobs? Am I better at it than him? Hands down, yes. But why is that always my job? Even when we're just trying to do something on a Saturday and it's like, who left me in charge? Who left me unsupervised? Who am I supposed to delegate to? What the fuck is going on? 
you know, I always feel like I'm fucking hurting cats and it's so exhausting. Okay, thank you for coming to my stuff talk. I appreciate that. But I really hands down believe if if I could just be seen and heard just a little bit more by the four tiny humans that we're bringing up into this world and by my husband, I feel like there would be a monumental shift. My my oldest has begun to see that. <laughs> like just yesterday, it was like she could see that I was spinning and she was like, just say it, just say what's on your brain. And I was like, okay, are you ready for this? And then I just started listing all of the things that just decided to become fires when I got home at five o'clock yesterday. And, and it was only an hour and it was like seven different things that were on fire. And I, I, I put most of them out, but the other one was like, that's tomorrow Stephanie's problem. And I, I'm going to have to let that burn, <laughs> you know, win some and lose some. But she was like, well, you put, six other ones out way to go and I was like oh my god like thank you I know thank you so much I appreciate you um the other thing and this kind of talks to what I talked about last week uh last week I really hit on perfectionism um and one of those things to help you work through your perfectionism is um letting letting shit go Elsa that shit you know just trying to let go of the control aspect <laughs> your girl has a hard time with that okay I have a hard time with that and my husband said something this morning it was like we're, we're trying to figure out there's some big life changes coming up and I was like I don't believe, I don't have faith, I don't, I'm not 100% faithful here that you are going to be able to get all of this done in the morning. He's like, oh, I, I don't know how to get you to believe that I will, but I will. It's not going to look as pretty and perfect as you do it, but I'm going to get it done. And I was like, you're not wrong. But I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> it's like, I saw this meme and it was like, my husband do be saying a lot of right shit. <laughs> but I ain't going to let him know. <laughs> but, um, the other aspect of it is, is to, once you kind of get into a, okay, well, here's the mental load for today. And then you kind of, but to have regular discussions, um, I don't feel, I don't feel like my husband and I really do that a lot, um, during the work week because we're going in seven different directions and it, by the time we meet back up, it's, you know, dinner time, it's clean the dishes, make sure the homework is done, make sure the kids are clean and then, you know, put everybody to bed. And then by that time I'm passing out, um, and it's really hard to find time to mentally unload. I guess that would be the the terminology. I don't know what the terminology, but it's it's really hard to find time to find. It's really hard to find time for discussions about the mental side of things. It, we find time for the. Um, you know, it's like and behind me, you see, except for that one calendar up there, it still says September, but it's fine. Um, you know, we have all of these calendars. We talk about, you know, I have another one that's colorful here for the kids. We talk about what's up with tomorrow. We talk about the next day's things or or even the same day things. You know, sometimes we'll talk about it in the mornings, but we rarely ever have time to be like, today was hard. <laughs> And this is why um, we we don't really make time for. Usually, it's like when the kids aren't here. You know, um, Tuesday. You know, every Tuesday we don't have kids. Um, it's just how our schedules have worked out with kids, and that's that's typically the night that we hold just for us. 
a lot of the times work creeps in and it's it's it is what it is like this tuesday it was so random we had gone to a restaurant in Pocosin and just uh we're just trying to get some nostalgia in drink some beer and then go home and then up and walks ryan's little brother and his dad and then it was like oh and then now his stepmom's here and his half sister and his half brother and so it's a whole family ordeal and so we're catching up with them and that kind of you know ransacked our date night it was nice to catch up with them don't get me wrong but it was like i was really hoping to use this time to mentally unload on you but it is what it is and so you know that came this morning it's thursday and so it was literally i freak the fuck out because it's like I don't have time to talk to you and this is a problem um but it's like I have a hard time once I get to that like max capacity or it's overflowing mental load it's really hard for me to take a step back and be like hey look this is a problem because at that point my anxiety is high um freaking out you know <laughs> um and so I don't take a step back and that's that's on me and I we all can use some improvement and that's something that I need to improve on but anyway so to recap go back go back go back oh wait no before I recap hey so actually this this week I almost forgot I'm keeping it in my awesome uh frozen it's kind of crappy actually <laughs> my frozen cup here because I had just bought them down at the croaker look at this um let me see if I can get it in there. Oh, the light's a little too bright. Sunny D Vodka Seltzer. Yeah, um, I just bought them so they were warm, so hopefully it'll be cold. Yeah, <laughs> that sounded amazing. Okay, so Sunny D Vodka Seltzers, you guys. I don't know. I'm not a seltzer person. I really am not. I saw this and I was like, no. Yeah. Vodka and Sunny D. That's screwdriver. That's, but add the seltzer to it. I don't know. So we'll see. Hang on. It's a seltzer. Well, I don't know what I was anticipating. <laughs> it literally says it on there. What the fuck is my problem? Uh, <laughs> why am I surprised? Okay. At first it was like, it's sweet. And then you got that seltzer finish. Yeah, I don't know about that. Also, it says it has zero sugar. Is that really Sunny D? Because doesn't Sunny D have like 97 grams of sugar in each cup? So, I don't know. Well, anyways, I tried something new. It's not, it's not my fave. I do try to try. I do try to try. I do... I do like to try new things. Um, I, for a hot minute there, I haven't, you know, I was just literally just drinking uh, vodka and tonic. So, um, so I got to get back into that. Um, I got this at the Kroger. Usually I hang out in Pocosin and go to Early Birds. That uh, It's Early Birds Bottle Shop. They have a ton of different random, really good um uh, selection of different beers and wines and they they actually have a growler filling station in there so um definitely gonna have to make a run on them next week and try to stock up on some different flavors and different stuff it's fall y'all I'm, I'm in a tank top and it really doesn't feel like fall but excuse me um okay it's seltzer wow <clears throat> okay anywho it's fall, and so all of the apple shit is going crazy. I did see this recipe for, it's not a cider, but it looked amazing. So I think I'm going to get the ingredients to make that next time. And then I'll post it on my uh, social media. So your girl is trying to get up with it. I've got a link tree now. Um, so you can find all the places that I'm at. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Instagram. I am on Facebook. Um, I try to post on a daily basis. I've got my website where all of my podcasts are. You can find them all there if you're not cool with the Spotify or the Apple uh, podcast. So anyways, I am... <laughs> 
I, I don't know if I like this setup. Um, those of you that are watching on the YouTube here, I don't know if I like this setup. I had to, so normally my, my laptop is behind me here and I had to move everything over here because I don't want it to face that way because that way <laughs> there's laundry and Ryan's desk, which is crazy. There's my dresser and so there's shit everywhere. I don't want y'all to see that. You know, it's, I am real about things, but at the same time, the aesthetics have to be nice. And so I don't want to show literally my dirty laundry. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to make this work. I really, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. So bear with me with the YouTube side of things. The, the podcast side, the, the just audio only, that's, that's not going to change. I do have this cool new mic filter, the little pop filter. And so it's really pudgy. I like it. So I'm really digging my setup with this, but, um, so, but yeah, if you've got any topics, if you've got something that you're trying to work through, you know, uh, I have a website with a contact page, chaoticcompass.com. You can message me there. Um, or if you're not cool like that, you don't want to do that. You get on the Instagram or the Facebook, you can message me, DM me there. So, yeah, I would love to hear from you. I've, uh, I talk about all the things. I don't, I don't have any problem talking about things, obviously. So I usually talk about the things that I'm working through and hopefully it helps one more person out there. So you don't feel alone. So we, today we talked about mental load and let me recap that real quick. Mental load. <laughs> Okay, mental load. So, um, bringing awareness to the mental load to your partner, to your significant other. Um, divide and decide. I'm not 100% sold on that one, but I'm going to push it. Um, let go of the control and have regular discussions. And then to recap for my dudes, um, just be like, I've noticed you have a lot on your plate. I don't always know what to do to help. How about I do an insert a suggestion? So that's all I have for this evening. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. And as always, have a great night. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate all of your love and support. If you really love today's episode, you should subscribe. And if you subscribe, then you get notifications of when my next episode launches. So another way to be super awesome would be to leave a rating and review or recommend it to your friends and family. If you're wicked awesome, you've already done all three. Another way to keep up with me and my crazy family is check out my website at chaoticcompass.com and I do blog and other stuff there. So I appreciate everything for you guys. I do this for you. So keep it up because the more you subscribe, the more I do.